In this video, we show you how to prepare the 0.8% agarose gel using 1x TBE buffer, described in your Biology 105 lab manual in Dissect Part C. Begin by measuring out the appropriate volume of 1x TBE to fill the gel former of your gel apparatus. In this case, we used 150 milliliters. We add that 150 milliliters to a microwave safe container. Then we measure out the appropriate mass of agarose to make our solution 0.8% weight by volume. We add the agarose to the TBE. It won't dissolve until it's heated. So we close the container with a vented cap because we'll be boiling this solution in the microwave. Next, notice the labeling on the bottle, and then listen as the researchers boil their solution. At the first check, notice the agarose has not started to melt. We'll do a couple different stages. <laughs> still see those beads in there. Yep. Okay. Back in. Back for more. I haven't even kept track of the time, but I always do it by how it looks. Looks good. Almost. Next, the solution must cool. We use a 55 degree C water bath to let it cool. After it's cooled a bit, we'll add the DNA dye called CyberSafe. CyberSafe comes as 10,000 times what we need to use it, so we use about 1 microliter for every 10 mils of solution. In this case, we're adding 15 microliters to our 150 mil solution. The dye appears orange in the solution and will turn the agarose gel just slightly yellow when it's mixed. Next, we check the temperature to make sure it's ready to pour. If it's too hot, it will go back in the water bath to cool just a little bit. If we try to pour the gel when it's too warm, we can cause damage to our equipment. Here are a couple of examples. These are no longer suitable for use. When our agarose gel has cooled to the appropriate temperature, enough that you can safely touch it, it's time to pour our gel. We use a gel box that has a gel former inserted in it. We begin by filling the reservoirs of the gel box with our 1x TBE buffer. I'll let you watch then as we insert the gel former into the box. We recommend students use gloves when doing this procedure. But here you see the gaskets are moistened just a bit to ensure that they seal well in the gel former. Notice how the gel former is put into the box in this direction. We'll change it later. Push down firmly. Then we're going to check to be sure that it's level. We need a level gel with the bubble inside the circles, we're ready to, pick, to pour the gel. We always check to make sure that the gaskets are sealed so our agarose doesn't leak into our buffer reservoirs. We'll need to insert some well formers. We call these combs. Here you see two comb formers are inserted into the gel former box and then we'll be ready to, for, to pour our agarose gel. Here you see it going into the gel former. When we're all done, we want to be sure to rinse out that bottle really well. First with tap water to make sure that none of the agarose sticks in our bottle, and then always rinse our scientific equipment with deionized water to make sure there are no interfering pollutants in our bottle. It's always a good idea to keep your lab equipment clean, and if you're the last one to use something, of course you clean it and make it ready for the next person. As the agarose cools, it will become more solid, much like Jell-O does. Here, the gel box on the bottom of your screen, or to the left as we turn, is solidified and is ready to be loaded. But before we can load the gel, we have to make a few changes. First of all, we're going to remove the combs and expose the wells. These are the wells into which we will load our DNA samples. 
So notice that the well is literally an indentation in the agaros. You will be assigned certain wells for your samples. Next, we have to turn this gel around so that the current applied to the gel box will pass across the gel. Remember, it's the movement of the current that facilitates the movement of your fragments of DNA. We put the wells to the top of the gel, in this case, towards the black electrode. It takes a few minutes to get the gel in place, and then the gel must be covered with the buffer. It's the buffer that facilitates the movement of the electric current across your gel. And again, it's that electric current that facilitates the movement of your DNA fragments through the mesh of the agarose. Next, listen as our researcher describes how she loads her sample into the wells. Right, so I usually rest my hand on the gel box and on my other elbow, so I'm kind of... And then you have to get the right angle to where you can see. I guess we're skipping the outer lane yeah. and going one in. Now watch as samples are loaded into the wells. The tip of the pipette is held just at the very opening of the top of the well. If you are too far out of the well, the sample may bleed out of the well. If you are too far into the well, when you expel your sample from the pipette, it may come squirting out. The sample is stained with what we call a gel loading dye. The gel loading dye usually has a nice heavy molecule to make sure that your sample will sink into the well. Notice how slowly and carefully this researcher moves from loading one sample, changing the tip, and loading the next sample. We'll go and watch a few more samples being loaded and then we'll show you the completed gel. When the samples are all loaded, we apply a current of 110 volts across the gel. Notice the display oscillates on our power source but it's still working and our restricted fragments are beginning to migrate across the gel.